Game Over Central here. Got the series, LR4. But today is the Disco 2, and today we're doing a simple build of a budget roof rack. We are going to turn these lengths of steel tube into a nice looking roof rack. We have inch and a quarter 14 gauge for the outer rail. We have one inch 14 gauge for the cross rails and the drops. And we will be using our robe fabrication vertical tube bender to get the guy in shape. All right, so there is a bunch of different ways we could go about doing this, you know, several ways to skin a cat type of deal. But this is how I'm gonna go. So we'll get out the handy dandy whiteboard here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and we're gonna bend up two U's essentially. We have our tube cut into 10 foot sections. So we're gonna take two of those tubes and start from the center out to bend and we'll have some legs left over pointing that way. And we'll cut up some lengths out of our remaining tube and we'll make up the length difference for however long we want. We're gonna start off with these two, will probably be about 56 inches or so from center of tube to center of tube. So we'll get two of those made up. Then once we get our length figured out, we'll put slide some slugs in between these and weld all those guys up. Then we will have our flat roof rack. We're just doing a single layer on this guy. And then once that's all made up, we'll have our crossbars. We'll weld in some crossbars. Then we'll have our drops on the side that go down to the drip rail. So let's get started on this guy. So right here kind of shows why we switched over to the Rogue Fabrication tube bender many years ago. I said, I think we got one of the first batch ones, which is 10, 15 years ago off Pirate 4x4. But we've been using that for, we'll call it 12 years. We used to have a JD squared horizontal bender. This one's a vertical bender. Um, but I like how this has a pressure die right here that clamps onto the tube and you can remove it and it keeps where the bend is in the same place. This allows you to keep bending in the same spot without kinking the tube. In this particular one, we're just doing four 90 degree bends, so that's not too big of an issue, but like you're doing a roll cage or something complex and you wanna ease into the bend and not go over it, it's nice because you can continue the bend after pulling the tube out. This isn't a sponsored video for Rogue Fabrication. We bought this on our own 12 years ago. I just like it. And if we are bending on the same plane and we wanna keep all the bends in the same index, all I do is take a piece of angle and just run a Sharpie down or a Milwaukee Inksall down. And that way you can set up the block on the same line and keep them in the same spot. So there we have our first bend done. As you can see, nice, no kinking, works out well. And we even pulled this guy out of the bender because we didn't have it bent quite to 90 degrees the first go round. You always have to play with how much spring back there's gonna be. This one is about a degree and a half, two degrees past 90 degrees. And then it ends up being a perfect 90. So we'll rinse and repeat three more times. front and rear 
bent up. This one looks really nice. That one, I kind of chooched up the rotation on the one bend. So we'll have to do a little persuasion. So this is either going to make it just about level or make it twice as bad. We'll see. All right, so we're going for about 91 inches, give or take quarter inch of length. So that'll get us just above the windshield to just above the rear which should work out nicely. So that leaves us with, we need two 21 inch. Is that right? Math, very positive. Two 21 inch sections in the center. So we'll cut two of those out of that inch and a quarter, and then we'll take and we'll cut four slugs out of the one inch stuff so we can sleeve it and make it nice and sturdy. Let's get to that. Sleeves in there, everything's all squared up, so I'll tack it together and then we'll get our crossbars in. All right, just so you know what I'm doing here, I left a little gap in there so we'll actually weld into the sleeve so it'll all become one nice strong piece. And those are six inch tubes in there. So we have our crossbars cut and cope. I've um, got the crossbars notched in there. And I just used an angle grinder with a flap wheel and did it by hand. All right, it's starting to look like something here. Got this side kind of buzzed in a little bit. So we'll get this guy flipped up and weld it all the way around. I think it's gonna be a nice, low profile, slim, sleek rack on the disco. So there's our first look at how it's gonna sit, roughly. Um, just wanted to throw it up there to see what kind of height we're looking at. It looks like we will be making some risers that are about nine and a half inches, I believe is what I thought of. So we're gonna do three, one, two, three on each side. And I'll show you how we'll do those to sit right in the drip rail. Starting to look like something. Uh, just wanted like a slim low pro rack for this one. Didn't want the two layer that most of them have. Just wanted a flat sunline setup. All right, so we got the tubes cut for our little supports that'll go into the drip rail. What we're gonna do here is in a second, we're gonna go over to the press. We're gonna smash the one end down, and then we got these little quarter inch, and five sixteenths, I think they're five sixteenths inch rods that we will smash and then weld these guys in on the end. Then this side will get welded to the rack and that'll be our support system. And then this angle piece is the start of our little clamps to tie it down. Um, we'll weld a bolt to these. We'll have a tube on the tube and then run a nut through the top of these guys and that'll cinch it from the bottom of the drip rail and keep everything tight. Welcome back to the Hydraulic Press channel. So we got all these guys bent up and I think it turned out swimmingly and it'll give us a nice correct angle for the rack. So we're gonna weld those guys onto the bottom and that's what will sit in the rail. Um, so if you didn't quite understand what I was going for before, this is it. support. We'll run over to the 
car and get the rack set in place and we'll tack these while it's on the roof so we can make sure it's where we want it. So we got a little supports welded on, going to, well, tacked on. Did that while it was on the disco. Gonna finish out welding these guys now. Then we can flip this guy over and finish up our tie downs. So next up is the first piece of the tie down mounts. So this will go right up under the drip rail. We're gonna weld a bolt to the center there and then on the drops those guys we will weld a sleeve and this oh drop it this will go up through that sleeve and we'll nut it on the top and we'll be able to cinch her tight so we'll buzz these guys together So there is the completed tie down mount. Ted just got finished cutting our little sleeves that'll go on the side of the rack. That guy's hot yet. This will slide up through that sleeve like so. That's how we're gonna secure this guy. So there it is, we have it all coated and looking nice. That bed liner gives it a nice textured black finish. Kind of matches the textured black bumpers and trim on the disco. And I think this thing's gonna look pretty good up there. So there's the first look at this guy. I think it looks pretty swell up there. Pretty happy with the result. We're gonna get her cinched down now and we'll pull it outside so we can get a better view at this little low pro budget roof rack. I'll get my face out of the way on the disco. Very pleased, very pleased. So there you go guys, there's our little budget roof rack. Took about a day to build. We have 50 feet of tubing. We bought 60 feet. We have about 10, 12 feet left. So call it 48 feet of steel tubing sitting in there. Nice and low pro, not dual level. So we keep the height down. Discoveries are already tall enough. And now what you've all probably been waiting for, the tally. What did this thing cost to do? I mean, we already have the tube bender, already have the welder. So that took out a bulk of what it would take if you didn't have those tools or if you had to hire someone to do it. But this thing came in at a whopping $154. That's including two cans of bed liner, 10 feet of extra tube, 12 feet of extra tube, the hardware, all said and done. How can you beat it for $150? Quite the improvement. As I've said many times before, you just can't beat a D2 with 32 inch tires, two inch lift, and a rough rack. I love this thing. Doesn't that look nice? That's quite the rack. And she's nice and solid. It's nothing like a safety devices in terms of design and structure, but I like a nice, simple, clean look. And it is a fraction of the price for a fraction of the rack. Let me know what you think of the rack down below. You think $150 was worth it? As always, make sure to subscribe. We'll have some more fabrication and off-roady stuff with the Land Rovers. Appreciate you guys watching. We'll catch you on the next one.